the test flights gave reason for optimism. The Big Bird flew well, despite the technical problems inside. That further inflamed rivalries between Hamburg and the Toulouse facility in southern France, where the fuselage is assembled. They had accomplished their task of building a plane that would fly. By that time, Airbus test pilots were taking the A380 on test flights over the Mediterranean almost daily. The super jumbo can weigh up to 560 tons and has a wingspan of 80 meters. The distance from cockpit to tail is only 73 meters. Some configurations envision a seating capacity of up to 800 passengers, or, depending on interior design, 112 African elephants. Experts agreed on one thing. The A380 sets a new standard for flying. The plane passed all authorization tests with flying colors. But this technological masterpiece was turning into a financial debacle. As development costs breached the 12 billion euro mark, airlines began suing for compensation for delivery delays. Industry experts say Airbus must sell 500 A380 aircraft to clear a profit. Only 180 have been ordered so far. And the manufacturer won't give projections on when it hopes to be in the black. By March 2006, it was clear that Airbus could produce a prototype, but it was essentially an empty shell. Whether the company could outfit its new aircraft was another matter. The Hamburg facility finally had to face the fact that it couldn't handle the myriad problems alone. Rüdiger Fuchs had seen the writing on the wall early on. He flew to Toulouse several times a week, hurrying from meeting to meeting. By now, the crisis had turned the rivalry between Hamburg and Toulouse into a vicious family feud. Fuchs took on the added task of mediating between the two sides. It all begins with each side blaming the other and refusing to take responsibility. But if you have a major problem, it won't just go away by itself. It has to be solved. That's especially true if the problem is serious, and that's exactly what we were up against last year. So it was obvious that we had to work together and bring in our brightest people to find a solution. And many consider that to be the single most important accomplishment of Rüdiger Fuchs. He brought German and French experts together. They'd hardly talked for months. Fuchs is credited with reopening lines of communication between Hamburg and Toulouse. He wasn't concerned about who had done what. He was only interested in results and found ingenious ways to overcome resistance. One of his first moves was to force both sides to use the same computer program. And he sent German engineers to Toulouse for a crash course that took 18 months. Soon, a new way of thinking began to take hold that came to be termed transnationality. It simply meant a system of working and innovating that transcended national borders. It also meant the relocation of entire assembly lines. Over 1,000 German workers suddenly found themselves in southern France. Fuchs was demanding a superhuman effort from his employees and from himself. I think I've used up my reserves completely. It's just like the historic boxing matches of Muhammad Ali. He'd sometimes say that he'd used up strength in the ring that was meant for down the road. And that's what this last year feels like. It demanded so much more than anyone should be able to achieve in that time span. And still, 
The first Super Jumbo was nowhere near completion. <laughs> 